I just got the Grizzly 12-inch uh, combo planer jointer, and I don't have, I previous to this I don't even have a jointer or planer, so it was a, a good upgrade for me. It took a couple days to get to get it working, uh, to get it correctly. I think the planing uh, was a little difficult, or sorry, the planing is the easiest. The face jointing was about the next easiest. I think the hardest was the edge jointing, just because you're kind of <clears throat> working with uh, again on the edge is not as stable. I actually helped uh, putting WD-40 on there. For this video, I'm going to kind of uh, show uh, d the different tests, or how you convert it from planer jointer. And then here's a video of what it looked like when I first started. So you can see here, this was one of my first attempts and a lot of snipe lines and a lot of this is why I was face jointing. And so I was having a lot of trouble, uh, but I worked it out. You see the results weren't that great. And it was really uh, kind of tough when I, when I first saw it. And it's like, I, I don't know if I made the right decision getting this, uh, but you see toward the end, I, I was really able to get everything square. And here's uh, just presenting kind of the, the, the specs of it, what it looks like and what it actually seems like to work with it. And so here is the, what it looks like. You can see it's pretty big, 12 inches wide. Uh, I got to show the dimensions here a little bit, uh, but it sits uh, meant for a bench top. Uh, so here it is uh, measuring the, the length of the table. It's a 42 and a half or 108 centimeters. I have them both here. And you can see the width is 12 inches, like I mentioned, so a little like almost 31 centimeters. And this is how it sits off the height, just sitting on the ground, so 20 and a half or so like that. Uh, but more importantly, the fence is about five inches tall, or it is five inches. And it's about 25 and a half inches. It attaches only in the middle uh, so that you get a little bit of flex on the edges, uh, which is one thing I noticed. So. Here's me just trying it out on the first time I had these, uh, these two poplar boards that I had glued together. So this the first attempt was pretty easy or I, I, didn't, I didn't have as much trouble as I thought uh, just because there was two together. So I had a really uh, support or good support, uh, whereas the, the trouble I started seeing uh, when I first attempted this or first learning it, uh, here I am just getting the other side, uh, was when I had one piece and you have that really narrow, you know, three quarters of an inch or so. And I think that that was that was difficult. Uh, here I am just making a second pass hat. You can see it made it, made it pretty smooth. Um, and then, so this is actually I actually what I found out was doing WD forty helped a lot. And then, as I as I mentioned, I'm going to get a different lubricant. Uh, but this was a little bit easier as well. I had a, a ten inch board here. I think it was ten and a half. Uh, so I, I felt it actually more stable holding it than trying to push it uh, with with the blocks. But again, this is my, after I think about three days of trying it out, I felt a lot more comfortable. So the first pass I made there, there's a, there's a sap wood on the, on the top uh, that I was, that, that's not hitting just because it's higher than the rest of the board. So I think I made three or four passes on this just to, to try it out. And it was a lot more successful. So I think on this one, I may have got a little bit. No, but I think I'm making just under one thirty second passes on these. And you actually adjust it on the end of the table back where I'm standing. So you can see it's, it's, it's ended up a lot better. Very smooth here, not really getting any, any snipe lines. That, so it really helped having lubrication on there as you push it so you're not struggling. And it came out really square. So again, this was one of my last attempts. So it was, I, had, I had already face joined it. And here I'm just going to show how to convert it from the jointer to the uh, planer mode. And so you had to take this the dust collection that that dust hood off it sits under just gets pinched underneath and then let me speed it up here a little bit the uh the the biggest hassle is taking off the fence i mean it's four screws but it's it, it's kind of annoying to have to do it each time but get used to it so and then just get the guard out of the way and then you put this hood on top and there's two little tabs that go in the side whether it's in the jointer or the planer mode it pushes in the same way and you need to engage those in there for it to actually work and then in this planar mode there's a screw you have to tie in versus the other way you don't have to put that in it just gets kind of pinched in the planar and again this is kind of getting used to this especially with a longer board is it's kind of a tight area but once you get it working like i said after a couple of tries i was able to get it you can see it engaged there as the speed as, as the rollers pull it one thing I realized or found out about removing the snipe was that, you know, at first, like any planer, it grabs in the rollers and it pulls. And if you kind of hold it steady, it avoids that that tick. Um, so you can see here it did a pretty good job. A lot less, 
uh, snipe lines on here. And this is bird's eye maple, which is normally gets chipped out around those little bird's eyes. So I'm going to try it again here with it with another smaller board. Uh, again, this is one of the later times. I just want to try to see how I can smooth it out, do a regular planing, but also get rid of that sapwood on the edge. And so I'm starting out trying with 130 seconds cuts just to uh, try it out. So actually, I'm sorry, I made two pat two clicks there. That was a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, but I think this this first attempt, it's uh, not going through or not taking as much. One thing I, I found, I think, it's a little difficult to to do the measurements by the little, little gauge. I found it a lot easier to just put it in there and kind of feel it. You know, put it down a little bit, make sure it doesn't do a a, a full pass, and then you know feed it through a couple times till you get it just at the right. So you can choose whether you want a thirty second or a sixteenth. The sixteenth is a little hard, especially if you're using 10, 12 inch pieces like this. You can really hear it churn down. So here I made two clicks on it. So you can hear the, the noise. So that was a full sixteenth inch pass. And you can hear the motor really kind of uh, go down on it. And actually this is a, this is meant, or it's like a full 15 amp circuit where it's meant for that. I have it on a 20 amp circuit, but it's going through a cord that's 30, 13 amps. And it actually tripped at one time when I was doing a full, I actually messed up and put an eighth of an inch uh, as, I, as I was learning it. So it was a little bit too much for it. And so you can see here, I have a, it's a little bit tr trouble every time or some, not sometimes just getting it in there, especially if you got a little uh, warp in the board is you get it underneath there because it's, it's a little bit tight to get into the, the, the rollers there. But you see after a couple passes made a good look on it. And so I just want to make one last pass here with a 32nd of an inch. So I, I did that one click uh, of, of the, of the knob there. And you can see if, if you, it makes four clicks around and that's one eighth of an inch. It's I found supporting it on the backside also help with any snipe on the ends. Here's a close-up look at it. Again, this bird's eye maple normally it would uh, on a lot of planers it would chip out around the eyes. It's kind of hard to see, but it's got a 3D effect, um, so you can see. So here's a, here's a here's another close-up. This is just showing you both sides. So this is the jointed side, obviously, because that's what I'm writing on here, just so I could remember as well. Um, and you can see there's no big gashes out, um, especially on the bird's eye or the swirling patterns, and this is the plain side. So it's pretty similar. And it just kind of giving you, showing you how flat it is. So I think, I mean, it was really acceptable for me for what, for what this is and having this capability to take raw lumber and see square on the edges. So I did the face, or I did, I edge jointed it and then did both face jointed one side and then plane the other side. So I have three sides square here. I hadn't run it through the table saw yet. But you can see just flipping it over, showing you the other side. This is the jointed side, showing you how flat it is. There's a there's a little nicks in the edge, so it might look like it's not flat. Uh, plus, I'm trying to film and uh, hold it at the same time. And then this is a two inch piece, just kind of showing you. After some practice, I was able to get a good joint, uh, both faces, and then I ran it through the table saw. So that's what you'll see. Just putting it up against my level here, showing you how flat it is. Trying to hold it in the middle, so it's showing off a little bit on the edges, but it's it was nice and flat. And flip it over. That those are burn marks from the table saw, uh, but this was very plenty sufficient if you wanted to to joint two boards together, two or more. Sorry. And then here I'm just going to go through and see how square it is, you know, for for what it is the product, and for what you're getting out of it, it's this is plenty sufficient. Uh, just showing you all four sides where again I jointed plain sides and then ran it through the table saw and I just have a little tabletop table saw and one thing is you're gonna have to have the four inch dust collection I tried running this with its shot back two and a half it was just pits were getting all stuck in the the reducer so you're gonna have to factor that in and I just show you as I, I converted the other way from planing to jointing this is if you're going from again from planing 
back to jointing. So you take the sh uh, dust shroud off, and then it's going to go underneath into the planing. So you really you just have to drop it down enough. It doesn't fit real tight in there. You don't have to screw it in. You just have to put those two clips in there. So you just have to get in just enough where you can you know where, where it'll, it'll slide in there. And then again, put those two little tabs into the slots. It's, it's really not that difficult. Uh, so get them in on both sides. Click it in. And then once you do that, so there's one side and then the other. Just kind of wiggle it around. And then once you do that, just put it up tight. You don't have to put it really tight. Just enough where it's, got, it's supporting it because it's just taking the action. And then this mistake I always make is, or a couple of times, the first couple of times, is to release this uh, the guard right now. And then I realize, oh, no, it has to sit up against the fence. So you have to put the fence back on first. Again, this is the the, the kind of annoying part. But it was um, not as bad after I did it a couple of times. And what I noticed is if you leave the bevel, so you don't have to change that. Uh, there's, there's, there's a separate screw for the, the beveling of that fence. And I left that and didn't move it and didn't touch it. And it actually stayed square enough where I can just put the fence back with these four screws. And it was sufficiently square. So I didn't have to mess with that. But I mean, I would check it every time, but it's not like actually putting the fence on and off should you know mess that up or the, the squareness. So here I got it back in, and then I just test it for square. It's going to be the most square right around the attachment point. Uh, they're in the middle. And I just mentioned that the two sides aren't attached, but it was it was good enough. And I was just testing it out here with my kind of cheap micrometer analog, uh, just to show that I you know planing it, jointing it was fairly pl parallel. Uh, here is I think it was like 0.2 or on there 8.82 or so. Sometimes I mess it up. I don't get the actual edge, but it's you know for what it, this is. This is plenty sufficient. So yeah, again, 0.82, so two hundredths. And then I tested it out on the snipe. It was 0.81, so you know, somewhere between one hundredth of an inch. And then this is the other side. Again, I haven't ran that side through the table saw, so this was at 0 0.1, 0 0.815 or so, like I said. Uh, this is the other snipe. This one's a little bit less. I think I was moving along the edge and not the solid part, but you can see for, for what you're getting, this is this is very helpful and I'm actually you actually using this on a project that I'm doing right now where I'm making a tabletop so I had three boards these these bird's eye maple that I edge and fit it joined and I'm gluing them together and then I face joined or sorry that's face planed it so it's and this will be in an upcoming video but overall really happy with the product